So, good morning, first of all, and um, today we are going to complete our discussion and our examples with the use effect. And so last time and in the lab, uh, we have experience, so let's say, with this kind of usage of the use effect to query information to a server, uh, typically in form of a GET request hmm, to get new information. We uh, made an example for getting new answer, new questions, and in the lab you have done the same, but for movies. Hmm. Um, and we stopped here last time saying, okay, this is a, yet another example of a usage of a use effect for fetching information, for getting information. Uh, where the difference between these and what we have done is that um, we uh, moved all the fetch in a separate file and then called the APIs instead here it was immediately used directly but still it's an async call that is then uh, called separately an async function called separately and this is a fact here as a dependency array uh, that just include text. So just uh, as a reminder, what means to have a dependency array like this when this use effect is called? This use effect is called when? Every time the content of text changes. So if it's text is one and continues to be one is not called and? The first time when the component is created or built or mounted actually okay um, so one thing that happens sometime is that in a use effect or in your application when you are querying a server the server can be slow it may happen because there is an internet connection so maybe is the connection that is low or is the server that is low or is maybe the query on the database that the server must uh, do that is slow. And so in the end, the response will be slow, will not be immediately back. And this is not a big problem from a, let's say, technological point of view, uh, because there is, in HTTP, there are timeouts, and timeouts are typically big enough to cover these cases, but it's a problem in the user interface that you are creating with React. Why it's a problem with the user interface you're creating in React? You don't want uh, the screen to be frozen. You don't want the screen to be frozen. Frozen. Yeah. It, well, with a sync await will not be frozen, right? Because a sync await will solve the problem of frozing. So you can still do things because the fetch and all these things are done in a async await. So the program will continue. So, more or less, not the frozen problem, but close to that. So you, you have a form, you fill out things in form, you send submit, and let's say you have to wait three seconds to get an answer. What's the problem? May happen, but not maybe always. It's a more think about you as users of a web application. If you press a button and nothing happens for a while, what do you do? You refresh the page or click again or do something because you think that why you refresh the page because you think that is not working, not working properly. But instead, it is working properly. It's just slow. So you need a way to handle slow responses, not again for fixing HTTP, etc. Not well, maybe also for fixing some concurrency problem, but most importantly to communicate to the person using your web application that everything is fine. You just have to wait for a while. So don't send another request because otherwise you will be duplication and so you may have other problems and still if you send another request you will still have to wait another three seconds so it's not really solving the problem and if you refresh the page 
uh, if you created something this something will be probably created but you will not see uh, anything back because you are still in the form page hmm? so it's this way uh, various things that we're going to see today um, has more to do with what the user of the web application see on screen than not on how things work internally hmm? like we did up to up today so up to today so this one thing so handling slow responses is useful for saying please wait i'm still processing this request hmm? so in our cases where we have the server and the client running on say computer this is basically if everything works well this is basically not needed because it's immediate the answer hmm? because we are on the same computer and our queries are pretty simple also our sql queries are pretty simple so they will return soon enough not to get the impression of waiting if everything works well hmm? so this is something to keep in mind to be prepared for but not something that you will you will see so that's why we also mentioned this uh, during the lecture because it's it's more difficult to experiment this if you don't you have to slow down the server to to see this happening so one thing to handle uh, slow responses is one strategy to handle slow responses is to create an additional state that is in this case a presentation state is not a state that used to keep data needed for your application but just a state for presentation purpose that could be this waiting state hmm? so a waiting state that could be true or false and when you submit a request you put waiting to true because you are waiting and when the response of the request arrive correctly in this case you set the state to false what is the implication of this the implication is that you change a state so you press a button you change a state this state will show this in this case this timer to say please wait or a message to say please wait so you send the request, it appears, please wait, or this clock, or whatever you want to communicate, because waiting becomes true. And then after, let's say, three seconds, when you receive the response back from the server, waiting will be put to false. So this component will be re-rendered, and you will see the results of this uh, flipped test as expected. So in the end, you will see this, but if you are waiting, instead of seeing this L word flipped, you will see this clock or whatever waiting message you want to, to handle. Again, this is to communicate that everything is working well for the moment, but you just have to wait to see the result because the result is not yet ready for you. And again, in our case, this will, we can see this rarely because again, we are on the same computer. We run everything on the same computer. But in more complex application, in real world application, where the server can be somewhere and do some query that we don't know, and our React application will be somewhere else, this can happen more frequently. So this is a way to think about this and handle this appropriately. An extra state for waiting and handling this with the proper message. Um, instead, uh, use effect can also have uh, an additional function inside of it that is called cleanup hmm? like in this example so within the use effect callback you can have so before the dependencies you can have this extra function that is a cleanup function hmm? so a function that say after the use effect is completed please do this other operation hmm? A function that is not very frequently needed with HTTP connection, but if you have a socket open, a normal socket or web socket open, then this function can make sense because maybe you want to close the connection. So you do the, the use effect, you get the information from the socket, you open the socket, you get information from the socket, and when you have done, you close the connection in this cleanup function. So this is an optional function that you can add within the, uh, the callback of this effect to handle what happens after 
the use effect completed its execution every time the use effect completed the execution mm -hmm. so it's not affecting how this effect work it just add a bit of uh, action an optional bit of action if uh, at the end of this effect um, so before moving on when you need an effect and when you don't mm -hmm. so as a rule of thumb every time you need to synchronize with external system like we did last week and we are going to do today uh, you typically need an effect mm -hmm. but there are some special cases that are similar to this uh, where you might not need an effect so this is from the, the direct documentation um, so it's their suggestion on how on when to use an effect and when not to use so when you want to transform data for rendering so if you want to filter a list before displaying the list don't use an effect and you have all the information in the application right it's not getting the information from other application you can do it with a use effect but it doesn't really make sense just to transform the data without this effect with a dot filter or whatever similarly to what we have done up to now before using the fact for sorting for instance the list of uh, answers that we had in our, in our table hmm? so in that case that sorting is a sort of filter so to transform data for rendering we have data we just want to render it in a different way less data in a different order when it's a matter of rendering the data that we already have it's a rule of thumb not to use an effect just transform data for rendering purposes and another case in which you don't want to use an effect is to handle user events so when i click on a button when i submit a form when i click on a link even if you end up with synchronizing with external system even if your form submission generate a post request even in that case the recommendation is not to use a use effect it's possible but not use as effect but handle it in the event handler you already have an event handler so in that case it's uh, recommended to handle everything that is needed to complete the user interaction the user event on click on submit on tap whatever in the event handler and not in a dedicated separate use effect hmm? You, again you can do in a use effect but it's recommended not to and we are not going to to do it in a use effect mm -hmm. so even if in that case that is a side effect because it's something that happens outside of the function is more similar it's well first is within the user interaction you click a button you want an operation to come back so that's the logic between a user interaction and then every user interaction in a way could be seen as a sort of side effect because it's something that happens from outside it will generate a result mm? at a certain point in time similar to an http request that came you don't know when the person will click on a specific button or will submit a specific form it will be never it will be every second it will be once per day you don't know mm? so in, in this case uh, while this can be handled as an effect since maybe entails a post request a put request a delete request etc still don't use a use effect and use a use, use directly the post request whatever in the event handler of that specific event hmm? so in the end use effect is mostly used to synchronize with external system hmm, at loading of the page or when some state will change hmm? typically with get request but not all, only get request but mostly for synchronize with data with new data or fresh data that you want to have in your application hmm? and here there is just a summary on for the four way to use um, a use effect so we have seen uh, empty um, um, empty dependency array dependency array present but empty Mm, this is called when the components mount missing dependency array on every rendering uh, 
weak dependency array on well when the components mount and when the value of the dependency array of each element of the element the dependency array change and if you want you can specify this return function as a cleanup function that is what happens when the component unmount hmm? when you finish the, the processing for the use effect and so let's see how to handle api calls in react we already have seen this partially hmm? Uh, but just to to use some um, distinction so we can generally say that we have two kinds of states we have the application states and the presentation state or the view state so the application state is the one that is typically get from the backend is typically get from the server and we'll probably update the server uh, so all the information that we need, all the data that we need. And this state has some, well, uh, properties, let's say. It should be retrieved from the backend. It should update the backend. Think about your movies. You get the list of movie, but you also want to add the movie, edit the movie. So you interact every time with the backend. And in theory, it should periodically check for updates. Because we are in a web um, application. So we have one server, but potentially and different clients. And every of them can change that unique source of data. So we have one list of movies in your case, but you can have four instances of your application open in the browser all of them do is different things one editing a movie the other one deleting a movie the other one adding a movie and all of them will operate with the, the, the one server that you have with the one source of data that you have so ideally each of them should at a certain point check if there are updates I deleted the movie but the other one added one so I, I will need to get the new information that another client added to me and this application state is typically, let's say, globally managed, meaning that the movie list that you have is accessible from all, all, almost all the components that you have in your application. Our question list is accessible potentially by all the pages, all the components. Our answer that we have in our example is instead accessible from the components that are related to the single question from which these answers are linked to. So it's not very, very, it's not globally for the entire application, but it's globally for that part. It's not globally, but it's locally to that part of the application. Hmm? Still, not only one single component, but shared among different components as, as the need. And it's the application state, the one that we mostly used up to now. And then there is the presentation state that we probably sometime have used, especially before the route. And it's a presentation state like waiting that I mentioned before, that is not stored anywhere. It's not data that you need to act on. It doesn't need to persist. It's something that lives and dies within the controlling component, singular. Hmm? And it's typically implemented as a local state with a use state. It's something that you need to show data, to present information, like waiting before. Hmm? And the message of error in case of waiting. So something that is just functional to the purpose of the React application for displaying information in the best possible way not to change data, not to store new data, etc. But still, it's still a state. So one recommendation to handle all the APIs is what we, we have done, is to keep all the methods for interacting with the server in a separate file, in a separate, compo in a separate module that we called API.js, and it's alleged name. And 
we keep, and this is again the recommendation, to keep all the details of the HTTP method within that API module so that the React application uh, does not depend on specificity of this method, of this call. And the React application doesn't have to handle with JSON, transforming JSON to JavaScript, header, HTTP headers, etc. Is separated in another module that is available to the entire application and that React application can use it. And it's also useful if you want or if you need to change at a certain point the API because if you maintain the same input and the same outputs you can change this API.js file and replace it with whatever. So if you don't have localhost 3001 you have another server you just replace that file. If you don't have HTTP request, you have other things, stable method, uh, fake data, you can just have the same method in the API.js file with the same input as variables and producing the same JavaScript object and doesn't matter what happens in the, in the between and the rest of the React application will continue to, working, to work without any problem. Um, so this is the, the application that we conceptually have, right? Do you think that is correct or something is missing? So we have, what do we have? Let's start from the smiley, the blue smiley thing. What is the blue smiley thing? A, a, yes, a user person that is using our React application and the user interact with what specifically? Say again. With the DOM. It's interacting with those, its own browser, and the browser just, again, the browser just understands HTML, CSS, and plain JavaScript, so it doesn't understand JSX. Hmm? So, the user see the representation of the React application in the browser as for the DOM, hmm? as it happens in, the, in plain HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. A lot of JavaScript, clearly. And then this application is created by direct components in JSX um, from the server and provided to the browser uh, and we use use state is effect event handlers we have this api.js file and this api.js file use fetch to exchange information in json over http with the express server and the express server again it's we have the express web application we have the route we defined uh, a few weeks ago and then we have the DAO for handling the uh, database request and then we have also the actual database hmm? that in our case is SQLite but could be uh, whatever hmm? so this is the conceptual architecture what is missing or better how can we improve this in a way improve slash what is missing it, it conceptual is correct but if you move from the conceptual to the real architecture what, where, what are we not considering here? Uh, it's, well, yes, it's Express Web Application. The multiple, user the multiple users. Mm -hmm. So we will have, in theory, more of this emoji and more of this, let's say, DOM in parallel served from the same React application, not, it depends. Conceptually, is the same that could provide different browsers and, and using one API server. Mm -hmm. So these people can do whatever they want and whatever the application allows them to do here, and then this could have implication on everything else. Mm -hmm. So in that conceptual architecture, Keep in mind these multiple users for a moment. Um, React defined two terms, and it's just terminology, uh, that are radiating and dehydrating. So assuming that application state is retrieved via HTTP API, as in our case, so we get the application state from the data that it's 
we know it's stored in a database and we get this information through an API server. We say that React define uh, rehydrating the application state as a thing and dehydrating the application state. So all of these apply to the application state, not to the presentation state. So rehydrating the application state means getting it from the API server, getting it from the source of data that we have. And this rehydrating must happen when the React application mount. And not by coincidence is what we have done up to now. When the React application run, start, we add a use effect with an empty dependency array that get the information we need to display, be the list of movies, be the list of questions, the data to get started. And it's called the raid rating, the application state. Raid rating also should happen when we want to refresh the state. And here, especially the multiple uh, people problem start, but actually if you also open two tabs of the same browser uh, on your computer, you, have, you can simulate these because you have like two instances of your application running and you can do different things one on another. So raid rating, so getting the state, the application state refreshed also happen when we want to refresh the state. So ideally every time that there is a change in the server. Someone, some clients add a item in the server, delete an item, edit any operation that is uh, a modification update on the server data. Mm -hmm. And we should also raid rate in that case. So if something changed in the server, we should know in a way and get the information from the server, even if the application still is already mounted. Mm -hmm. And so this is raid rating. Uh, date rating instead means extracting the application state from the uh, React application. Hmm? And this is something that happens more multiple time and should happen whenever something in the application state is modified. So we, we have the application state and this is partially done for free by React because the state generates a rendering. Hmm? So from the application state we extract the information to be displayed. And this, again, in some cases happening automatically because it's a use state generated render. So when we have a new application state, we also have new information on the page. In other cases, if you remember before routing, we had to force these. If you remember just before adding the routing for the form, for editing the form, we added a key to force the rendering. So that was a sort of dehydration of the application state to update the entire React application. So raid rating at one time is basically what we have done up to now. A use effect with some fetch that gets the response in JSON and then set some state. Here you have a loading state that is similar to the waiting state I mentioned before because also raid rating from the server can uh, ask for some time and so the component initially will be empty. Hmm? So same approach for ending with low responses. What means that the components will be, so in our case also, the components will be empty. So when we, when you la launch your movies application, what happens step by step? Or when we launch this application. So this is shopping list in which we have a list as a state. Uh, and then we have this use effect to get the list or whatever things. Uh, it's included in the shopping list and then you have if loading is true show the clock otherwise show a list hmm? a bullet point list with all the item getting from the server so when this application run what is the and and let's assume that there is no other html components just a white page with this list in uh, written in black so when we run this, so let's say that this is app.js, the starting point. When we run this, that is our entire application, 
what happens step by step what you see in the browsers if you can slow down time that one second is one minute what do you see on screen first in the browser at first start with loading if you don't have loading you see just a white page why let's say that we don't have this loading yes waiting for server means why we're wait what is me waiting for server but even if the server is very very fast at first we you we, you don't see right if you run your application or if we run the application we have a first empty page and then we have the full table with movies and questions but we don't see because this is happening very very quickly it's waiting for the server but not only which is the order, remember, which is the order of operation of all this? When is done the user effect? After the component mount. So the first thing this component does is setting the state, creating this return, so creating the list with loading, in this case, writing loading, and then after creating this, call the user effect. So, in any case, you will render this first, then do this effect. So, every application for a while will show the empty page or the loading page or the waiting page or whatever. And then, as soon as the user effect is called and the server reply, you have the information. But the first thing is to, um, to get, to render this. So, if you hear, instead of list.map you say a list of zero or list of five you get a if you do return list that's an array right so if you do list of five what happens instead of this undefined. what is undefined the result uh, the object, uh, five. yes we don't have because the list is empty at the beginning right so what do we, you get in the browser yes empty. still empty but in addition to empty an error that will block the execution of the user effect. So you will see empty and will stay empty. And in the console, you will see exception or error, list of five is impossible to get the 50 elements of an empty array, something like this. And if it is not an array, but it's an object, it's even worse. Like list, well, it's not a list, but if you have something like object.id, and you try to access the ID, the first time will not work, will give you an error because ID cannot get an ID from a, a, an undefined object, for instance. And this will, in some cases, will block the execution, so this user effect here will not be run at all. So in this case, it's not a problem because you have, you have list.map, and so the map of an empty array does give no error, so it just shows nothing. But if in this code you have something that can generate an error, this will generate an error, will block the execution of the JavaScript file, like any error. So pay attention what you put here, because the first time you don't have, this is executed after. So first, this, and second, this. So if you do something here that strictly depends from this, you can have problems. And problems means errors. You need to check or you need to do something else. In this case, again, nothing bad happened because the list map it just does nothing, but the list exists, it's just empty, 
and so it does not iterate on anything, but no errors. Okay, but this is what we have done up to now, basically, in the lab and class. Um, Raid rating at the first time, at the mount time, when the application starts, and when the page refresh. And then you want to raid rating to refresh the state. So something in the server changed and you want to get the new information. So let's say that we are using the same React application. I added something in the list of movie and you want to get the new list of movie with my newly added information. So once you know that something has changed, you can use a use effect with a dependency as before to get the new information. Define re refresh the page means yeah. pressing the refresh button. No, hopefully not. I mean, not in a well done uh, application. Okay. That doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, but if it's a well done web application, it shouldn't happen or should happen really, really rarely. when one of the value of the dependency change. Mm? So if this is the dependency array, the use effect will be called at mount time, and when the value of deep one change, or when the value of deep two change, or when both change, but in any case, when one of these change, it will be called. What do you mean when we need to condition? I mean when we need the, the user effect to be called when uh, both variables change. Well, if both variables change, it will be called twice, right? Because change deep one will be called and this will be called. If you need to wait that both are updated, you can do it, uh, you can check within the callback. Like if deep one and deep two is still are equal to something, then do the rest of this effect. Okay, so here the problem is this once you know, as he was basically hinting. How do we know if something in the API server change? Uh, we, we can ask the server how frequently. Depends from what? And how do you know? As you as a client, you as a person in your own home, or with on your own computer, with your own instance of the React application, how do you know how many users are using the application? Because the server knows, right? But the client doesn't know. Cannot know. How many users? Can a server send data to the client which is HTTP? Depends. Which HTTP? Uh, it depends on the technology now. There is a kind of technology that allows the, the user to listen every change. But it's not HTTP, right? It's not the protocol because HTTP is response is request response. So the client, the protocol say that the client send a request and the server at a certain point in time reply to that request. That's the paradigm of every request response. There is no the server send something to the client. It's just not possible in HTTP. So we have a problem here. So we cannot with HTTP, 100% of the time, be sure to have the refresh state. We cannot. Hmm? We can try to do our best, and that's why probably sometimes you need to refresh the page, but we can try to do our best hmm? as possible. Or at least getting the data when we need them. So if we need to 
edit something, maybe before editing we can check if there is changes so that we are sure that we can edit something that is actually, actually editable that's not already changed or is not being deleted, right? So, we have these two problems. One is the end clients that we already discussed and one, the other one is infinite loop but is um, unrelated to the end clients and more related to use effect in particular. And it's more related to the question that he had last time about can we use an, a, an object within a uh, dependency of a use effect or an array. So the end clients is, is clear, right? What we happen with end clients. We can have end browsers all trying to do something with the API server. Hmm? And so what happens in the, in the web app in browser one uh, when browser three updates something? Hmm? So if browser three add something, how can they notice this? They will not automatically hmm? in HTTP. So um, we are going to, to discuss this better than nothing solution um, and just mention the real solution of this problem. Hmm? So the better than nothing solution is that the web app should ask for data as frequently as possible. Hmm? As frequently as possible means, well, when we load a new page view, we should ask for data. And this React is helping because when we think about our application, uh, with the answer and the question, we will go in a page with all the answer, the user fact will ask for the list of answers. So that is partially automatically refresh data hmm? because the component mount from scratch. But we should also check if there is something after adding, updating or removing information. First to check if our add, edit, remove went well or not. Maybe we add something, we had a problem in the server and this thing is not added properly. So we need to check if it's added properly. We have the response from the, from the server, but we can get all the information in that case so that we also have other adding, edited, deleted items. And we can also, we are not going to do this, but we can also do it periodically like polling, like every 30 seconds, the client asks for a fetch. Set them out. Hmm? We are not going to do this, and this is really not good under many per performance perspective, for instance. Hmm? So, the better than nothing solution is actually not a solution. Hmm? It's just a way to minimize the problem. Hmm? And it's the things we are going to do. We're going to uh, systematically ask for new information when we do some operations so that at least in those moments we have the most updated information that we have we can have hmm? but still not a full solution the real solution as your colleague was saying is that the server should at a certain point communicate changes to the client hmm? to all the clients that in that moment are open this is not possible in http and this is also out of scope of this course so hopefully you can see all, all of some of these in another course. But for the curious, this means, for instance, using WebSockets. Hmm? So WebSockets are sockets, like C sockets, but for the web. Hmm? So you open a socket, a channel, a bidirectional channel between two entities, doesn't matter who, and you can change data. And it's bidirectional communication. Hmm? Or any publisher subscriber mechanism where you have something that publish information and somebody else that subscribe for this information and get updates in a peer-to-peer -peer, um, sh scenario instead of a server and client scenario. Hmm? But do we still use the REST API uh, with uh, the web sockets or not? Since the REST API is <laughs> Uh, well, WebSocket is just a technology. Uh, let's say it opens a socket. What you pass through the socket is not specified by, it's like HTTP, right? It's a protocol. What you put in the body of HTTP is up to the developer and there are best practice, there are standards, but you can pass whatever you want in the body of an HTTP request. 
And similar here with socket, you can pass whatever you want. So no, you don't have REST APIs because WebSocket is just a, cha a communication channel, but you will need some endpoints somewhere. Say, okay, I want the movies. I want this information, right? You don't want all the information every time. You want maybe some information. So you can have something similar to the URL to specify the topic you want to, to get information from or to pass information to if you just use WebSocket. Uh, but you don't have get, post, etc. because it's not HTTP, it's a different protocol. Hmm? Uh, but again, this is, uh, and you can have HTTP, REST, the REST API is for getting the information and WebSocket only for getting updates. It's not that you have to choose one or the other, you can have both if you want, okay? So these are just other mechanism, but we are going to the, um, let's say classical hmm, sort of, well, not solution, the classical way to minimize this problem. So asking for information as soon as we know that there is new information because we generated new information. And this is one thing. So basically keeping in mind that sometimes we need to check information on the server. The other problem that we I mentioned is infinite loops in user effect. Hmm? Uh, and this is one of the main pitfall that can happen when using user effect. So infinite loops in rendering and in calls. So you continuously render the components. And React do it, do it for a certain time and then say, I'm done. And give you a long error and the application stuck. Or you can have infinite loop and or you can have infinite loops in the HTTP calls. You continue to get, 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 get the information forever. And in that case, the server at a certain point will say enough. Um, and this is happen, can happen frequently when the user effect is used with the use state. Because clearly the user effect changes stage, the stage changes the rendering and maybe something else. Change, call the user effect again, the change the state and you continue to do this forever. Hmm? And this happened in two specific, this can happen in various cases, but the two most frequent cases are when the dependency array is missing, but should not. And it happens when one of the items or the dependency array is a JavaScript object or a JavaScript array. Hmm? So the second case doesn't happen when the dependency array is primitive values, only when it's object or array. So first case, missing dependencies. Look at this code, what is missing here? What is wrong here? So what is does this code? It implements a counter when? Yes, but step by step. It increments a counter that is displayed here when? Which are the conditions to, to, to increment the counter? It's written there. when the value is modified. And so you have an input text, you write something, and every time you write or delete something, this is called the end of change, that well, will set the value and uh, you um, change the count. And here there is a use effect that actually increments uh, the count. And what is missing here? The dependency array, yes. So this, as he was saying, will update the, the counter forever. So you, you write A in the input field and this counter continues to increase. Uh, which dependency array? Yeah. Value. Hmm? Because it's, it's not count, it's not C, clearly, but it's value because the, you end all count, you modify count, hmm? you modify count according to the value of value. Hmm? So this will 
re-render the components forever, basically. Because you update the state, set count, and every time you update the state, you render the component. So since you update the state forever, you update the component forever. Hmm? With this, you call this effect only at mount time, and it's fine, and when value is changed. That is the purpose of, the, of the, this entire application. You change something in the value, and you want to increment the number of changes. Hmm? So that is the dependency array you need to put there. Even if, it, you see, is not value is not used in the callback. Hmm? So React, in this case, will not give you, tell you that a dependency array is missing because you are not using any variable in the callback, but still is missing because logically you are bin binding count with value, but you are not binding count with value in the um, use effect. Okay, object as dependencies. What is wrong here? Here we have the dependency array. So, and it's the right one because it's secret. So we have this object secret that contains uh, an object with two values. One is value, one is count secret. And when you uh, change the value, you store the new value in secret of the value and you and you change properly the state and you show the number of secret you, you added and only when secret is equal to secret as, as the only when value is equal to secret to secret. Mm -hmm. Every time, uh, uh, every time mm -hmm. you change the object, it will recall the use effect. Yes, every time you change the object, will call the use effect. But what do you mean for change the object? I mean here we change the object, right? And it's it's right because we want to change the object in this case. What do you mean for every time you change the object? Hmm. But it's not that the problem. This generates an infinite loop. Again. We should put secret value. Why we should put secret value? Secret value is not the changes in the in that sense. Because they just the counter. Okay, logically it makes sense to uh well Okay, logically it makes sense to use secret dot value for both these reasons because we use dot value and because we don't we don't care about changes in count. But and this will solve the problem actually, but this is more a logical problem, but it's not we also solve the infinite loop of to why it's happening an infinite loop here. It's not because we, we do this, because we do this only when it's secret, so we don't do this every time when the, the value is secret. So if we write hello, this is not called. And so we don't change count. But still, this will generate an infinite loop. Hmm? I will tell you. But the problem is using here an object or an array. If you write secret of value, it's, more, it's logically more correct, but it's also solving the problem. Because the problem is that The use effect is called every time the content of the dependency value change. But when you operate with arrays or object, it's always change because it's always a new object for the dependency array. So even if you have secret and you rewrite secret, you build a new object. And even if the content of the two object, even if you don't change the counter, even if the object, the content is identically for JavaScript, is a new object, and so it will run the dependency array again. And this will happen with every object, whatever you write in the uh, use effect call. 
Every time you do any operation on this object, it will be a new object, it doesn't matter the actual content of the object, and then we re-render this effect again and again and again. Hmm? So, do not use object as dependency array, ever, but always use a property of the object, in this case value makes more than sense, we have said, to link the dependency. And this property should not be another object or another ob or an array, but it should be a primitive type, an integer, a number, a string, something like this. Because for that items, JavaScript is able to understand if it's the content that is changed or not. For object, it will always be change, whatever you do for the object. And same things happen uh, for the array. Hmm? Because also an array, every time you do anything in the array, it will be a, no, a new array. Even if you don't actually change, if you, even if you replace one with one, that same content, it will be a new, totally new array. Hmm? So the user effect will be called. So in this case, don't use, hmm, again, array as similarly to the dependency, to similar to the object, you can use other properties like the length. You cannot access to the array, in this case, different from the object. But you can use any, or, or you don't use array at all, so like an empty dependency array, or you can use any property of the array, like the length, to understand, to check if something is changed or not, to re-execute the use effect. So, in general, avoids array and object as dependencies, they use an item within the object, or a property um, of the array, like length, to do the use effects and change the logic of use effect accordingly. Okay, and this is all about array iterating. Mm -hmm. So, the iterating. Um, let's consider this example, right? We have um, a button that is add, and when you click the button, you add an item. And this add item is something that set the state of the new item added and call an API to add this item on the server. Hmm? So you write something, you press, uh, you write bread, you press the button add, and this bread is added in the list, and then also it will be do a fetch to the server to add the uh, item in the list that you have on the server. So, in this case, we have two updates in parallel. We have the application state that changed, and we ask the server to also change the state in the server. And this is called optimistic update. Because in this code, you assume that the server will update correctly, without errors. And why you, see, you say you can assume this? Because here, you update the state. So your application will show you immediately the item you just added and you do the request in parallel to the server to add the same item. And this could go well or not, you, you don't know, because you show in your application, to the user of your application, that the item is added. And so the person will continue to do other stuff with the application. Hmm? So this is optimistic, most of the case will work, but still optimistic. So if we want to be more conservative, like I want to update the list only when I receive an answer, a positive answer from the server. Hmm? So I can do this. I can, instead of setting the list and sending the request, I send the request, and if the response is okay, hmm, or in the then, if it's in a separate uh, API, at that point I update the list. Right?
So this is more, let's say, safe. Let's use, let me use safe in this context. Because the state is updated only after checking with the server that the modification is done properly. So if the server is able to add the item, I will show the item in the list. If the server is not able to uh, add the item, the item will not appear in the list. So I need to reinsert it again or something like that. So no parallel updates, we solved that problem. It's not optimistic, it's conservative. What's the issue here? Hmm? Similar to before, the user of our application will not see anything. It will add something, press the button add, and see the full list of items without the things that uh, it just added. And so what's the reaction, typical reaction in that case? Or refresh or adding again. Oh, it doesn't went well, let's add it again. And then we'll not see anything if the server is low. If the server is very, very fast, it will immediately see. But if the server is low, it will not see and then refresh or add again and say, okay, it's not working properly, the application. Or maybe I did some errors in adding, let me add it again. And so it will have two items, identical items, or three identical items, it depends how much the server is fast. So to solve this, what uh, you can do is a mix of the two previous approaches using that waiting hmm, idea of before. So what you can do is update the state in parallel so that the user see that the operation is completed, is done correctly, and send the request to the server. But mark the added operation as temporary. Change color, write not saved, write something to say the operation you have done is good, but is not yet final. It may have some errors hmm, at a certain point, or they will come back as confirmed. Hmm. So mark the update as temporary, hmm. like adding this I don't know, temp parenthesis in the element, or changing the color of the background if you have a list, like yellow background. Something that say, this is not like the others, but your command is received correctly and then when the response is okay ask again do the refresh ask again for the information in the server why, why when the response is okay because in that moment you are sure that the server completed the insertion or whatever it is the change and you have everything in the database and you can ask again for all the information to get it this ask again will remove the background, will remove the temp, will remove everything and will show the user the full list. So if the server is very, very fast, all of this is basically invisible or barely visible or not needed. But if the server is low, this is needed to avoid repeated operation, to avoid error generated by the user that think that something go wrong. Hmm? So this is a mix of the cases hmm? and you can basically do something almost identical to this um, in your lab exercise. We will do something different here because our application is slightly more complicated than this. But still the idea is that let's wait for a while, let's notify the person that we are waiting for a reason but the operation was good up to the point and then if it's good we can continue if it's not we can give it the error we can explain what is the problem etc um, okay uh, I, I'm going to skip this because it's not incredibly it's just it's more about theory about the hooks how they work etc so if you want, it's not really fundamental. Well, it's good to know, but it's not really fundamental in practice. Um, if you use the hooks that we, have, we use uh, appropriately, 
Um, but there are some rules behind the hooks, the one that we use. You can also generate, create a, a hook if you want. And so in that case, if you are going to create a hook, nothing that we are going to, to see in this course. But if you work with React and you need to create a hook or use multiple hooks together, not just use effect, use context and um, use, uh, use state and the hooks uh, of, of the rat router. These are rules that can be useful to, to have a, a, a look like how can the same function return different state variable even if it's actually the same use state, right? Because you always use use state. But here you have different values and different functions. So how is this possible? Hmm? So these slides explain how things work hmm? and nothing changed the fact that they work in that way. Hmm? So if you want to have, have a look at this, there are like four or five slides, not a lot. Um, with some recommendation like only call hooks at the top level, that is something that we always do, right? We always use use effect, use effect and use state at the beginning of the function, at the beginning of the component, and that's something that we uh, must always do. Do not call it inside loops, condition, or nested function, because otherwise they are not working properly. And only call hooks, uh, call hooks from React functions not from non-react function and again this is something that if you use hooks properly you will always do but don't call hooks from non-react functions hmm? so something outside of components or something outside react because they will not work properly uh, except custom hooks but we are not going to to do custom hooks okay so we can we have finished the, the theoretical part about these effects. We are going to do an exercise in the next hour about post, put, delete, this optimistics update, etc. in our uh, question and answer application that is slightly more complicated than the movie list that you have in the lab. So some things will be more complicated here than in the lab, but it's fine. So you see both options um, and we'll try to complete the uh, the application, the connection with the React server, and we then dedicate the last 20 minutes, 30 minutes of the next hour to speak of the exam. Okay, but now 20 minutes of break. <laughs>